Hi everyone, this is Hannah, bringing you this week's tech tip from Strucksoft Solutions Great Tech Group. Today's tech tip is entitled, How to Rename and Renumber Your Panels. Over here, I have already created six, uh, six walls that I still have not framed. We're going to be framing those shortly. And before we start, I do want to highlight that I'm using a specific build for today. I'm using build 8844. So these commands that I'm going to talk about today are going to be found over here in this build. In previous build builds, when we were talking about wall multi-layer, you will find the wall multi-layer rename and renumber tools over here under operations. They have recently been moved here, and now the single panels and multi-layer panels have the same tools to rename and renumber your panels. To start, I just want to highlight that I have three walls over here that are single layer walls that I'm going to be framing as uh, single, uh, single layer panels. Over here on this side, I have three uh, different multi-layer walls that I'm going to be framing with as multiple layers in MWF. Let's start with a basic panel creation. I'm just going to select one wall over here. I'm going to go to MWF menu. I'm already in the wall module and I'm using ProSuite for today. I'm going to click on create and I'm going to get this dialog box and I'm going to be creating a panel. I will choose a template. I'm just going to use an out of the box template called light gauge. I will set it as active. I will hit close. And before I click on create, I just want to highlight, do you see over here where it says prefix? This is actually where you can control what you want to name your panel. You can also add a suffix, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to leave it as is and click on create. I just want to show you what happens automatically when you create a panel. I'm going to open this uh, properties menu in a little bit. I'm just going to click on OK for now and I'm going to close it. And we have just created a panel and you'll notice that it was automatically named panel one. OK, so what's going to happen next is that every time I create a panel, unless I change the name and number, the next one is going to be called panel two, panel three, panel four and etc. I'm going to show you something in Revit. If you click here on Manage and you click here on Project Information, I'm just going to expand this a little bit. You'll see over here that the last panel number is one. So MWF is going to add plus one every single time to this number over here. If you wanted to change uh, the way MWF is starting, you would have to come here and change this number over here. I'm not going to do that for now. I'm just going to click on OK. And I just want to show you something before we continue. If I select one member of the panel and if I go to properties, let me just expand this. Under the general tab, you can see here that this is panel one, this is the wall that we used, and this is panel one. To change the name, you can go here to prefix, and let's call this P instead of panel, and I'm just going to click on OK. This will change the name, but it will not change the number. One more thing, or actually two more things I want to show you. If I select uh, this panel again, click on properties, what I can also do is add a suffix. Let's say we have two types. We have a type A and a type B. I'm just going to add A here under suffix and I'm going to click on OK. You'll then notice that the name has changed. It's still P1, but there is the letter A right after the number. One last thing I want to show you. If you click on properties again, we're still in the uh, general info tab. I just want to highlight that you do have the option of using alternate name. 
alternate name is when you want to keep the name of the panel, but you want to give it a second name or an alternate name. I'm just going to use wall A in this example and click on OK. You'll notice over here that the name has not changed automatically. The reason for that is if you go here to settings, click on settings and go to where it says project panel names. If you click over here, you'll notice that the project right now is, is using display panel name normal. If I click on alternate and click on OK, it's going to show me the alternate name that I have created. I'm going to go back and just change it, or actually I'm just going to use Control Z on my keyboard and just change it to what it was before. Today I'm only going to cover alternate and normal. We do have other tech, tech tips that talk about normal with positioning and positioning only, but these are the ones that I'm going to cover for today. So let's continue with our renaming and renumbering. I'm going to make a mass selection and I'm going to use Quick Create, but before I do that, I just want to highlight that I have already created a template map and I've specified the wall types that I'm using and I've assigned, let me just expand this, I've assigned MWF templates for these three wall types. I'm going to make sure that this is highlighted in blue, click on OK, and now I'm going to make a mass selection, go to MWF, and click on Quick Create. You'll notice that I've created, there's three panels in my project. The next one was called Panel 2, and the third one was called Panel 3. Now I'm going to create over here multi-layer walls or multi-layer panels using the wall multi-layer menu. I have already assigned templates for each one of these three different wall types. Just as an example, I'm just going to show you one of them. So if I click here on settings under the wall multi-layer menu, and if I look for this specific wall type, I'll just type it in just to find it faster. This is the one I'm using brick on metal stud and you'll notice over here that I've already defined uh, the templates that I want to use for the different layers I want to create. I've done this also for the other two walls. So now let's go ahead make a mass selection, go to operations and quick create from the wall multi-layer menu. Now I have six panels in my project. Three of them are single layer and three of them are multi-layer. And if you zoom in over here, you'll notice that panel six has sheathing, multiple layers of sheathing. So does panel five and so does panel four. Now let's talk about the options of renumbering and renaming our panels. Let's go back here to the tool. And the tools we're gonna talk about are the following. Rename panels, renumber panels, and renumber panels by selection. Let's start with the first one over here. So you'll notice that I did not select anything. I'm just going to hit escape on my keyboard to make sure that nothing is selected. And then I'm going to use the tool to click here on rename panels. You're going to get this dialog box. And in this dialog box, you'll see the naming, uh, the naming that was used the prefix, the number, suffix if it exists, alternate name, and it even shows you if this panel is placed on a sheet or not. You can make changes over here. I'm going to make a few changes. I'm going to change this one here to wall. I'm going to change this one here. Instead of three, I'm going to make this 300. This panel five is going to have a suffix. B, and this one here is going to have an alternate name. I'm just going to call this wall B. And when I click on OK, 
you'll notice that there's a change with the naming. So here, this is now wall two, this is now panel 300, panel four, panel 5B, and this is panel six. However, if I change the settings, project panel names, and change this to alternate, you'll notice that anything with alternate names is going to change over here. I'm just going to take it back to the way it was before. The next option would be to renumber panels by choosing two grid lines. So here, this is going to change the name and number of your panel by selecting a specific point in your project. And then the software is going to automatically rename and renumber all of your panels in an automated process. So panels will be uh, the closest one to the point is going to have the smallest number. And then the numbers are going to uh, be added plus one uh, every time to higher numbers as the radius of the point expands from the central point. I'm going to click here. The software is going to tell me that I haven't selected two intersecting grids. If I had two intersecting grids, if I had drawn them before, I would need to select them before I use this command. But since I don't have any grids, I'm just going to pick a point. I'm going to click on OK, and I'm going to pick a point right here on the bottom left of panel 6. Now the software is going to ask me what number I want to start with. I'm going to say 100, and I'll click on OK. Now the software is going to go ahead and renumber all of my project starting with the closest panel to the point that I had selected. So this panel is going to be 100. And then it's going to add plus one in a clockwise radial motion. It's kind of like a spiral where this one is panel 101, but you'll notice that it still has a suffix. This is now panel 102. These are alternate. Let me switch them back. So now this is showing as panel 105. This is wall 104 because I had renamed it. And this is panel 103. So this way I was able to change all the namings and numbers of my project with just one click. The last option would be to renumber panels by selection. Here I have two options. I can make a selection first. Or if I don't have anything selected, the software is going to prompt me to make a selection. So when I click on this tool, I can add a prefix, a prefix of my choice. Let's use P. I can add a suffix and I can specify a start number. I'm going to use 300 as a starting number. You can override duplicates and you can also generate duplicate warnings or not. Then you click on OK, and then the software will prompt you, and you can see over here at the bottom left that you can select one or more walls, and when you're done, you click on Escape. So let's start here. So this panel has changed to P300. I can click on this one. This is now P301. This is now P302 and etc. And then when I'm done, I can just hit escape and this will deactivate the command. This concludes our tech tip for this week. I hope you found it useful and we'll see you next week. Bye everyone.